Welcome, you're listening to a Rollmaster Classic actual play set in Terry K. Amther's excellent Shadow World using Fantasy Grounds. You can find session summaries, items and characters on Obsidian Portal, where our campaign is called The Praise of Old Men. This episode is cross-referenced as Chapter 3, Demons of the Burning Night, Part 9. We're also on YouTube, Podbean and Twitch, where you can find the various links, as well as an index of some of the main points of each episode in the description. We're a bit short-handed this session, only having Cran, Silk and Ugnan around. The other players should hopefully be back soon. Last time, the party are unable to breach a mysterious Kragora-lined room. Cherry is able to use magic to reveal that the room did hold fabulous riches. So this episode follows the party as they try to work their way inside. Obviously, with just three of you, you can explore the areas of this temple which aren't quite explored. Um, yep. So if you can recall, you found it's marked on the map with that blue box, that Krigora lined door that Magic thought, or sorry, Silk warned you, let's not tamper with that just yet. Let's see if there's another way in. Um, there is one other door that through the warding sign. You'll recall that some of the doors have warding signs that are attack. Mm. Some of them have warding signs which can be damaged. The warding sign on the door to the north that you've not gone through um, is intact. So whatever lies beyond, you're hoping is um, undead, demon free. So um, mm. I can sort of look after the other three characters uh, for Cherry where necessary, uh, making trap rolls. Cherry will probably uh, lead the way or go up to that remaining door. And yep. she will check it for traps. Let me call up that silk. I don't want silk doing it. I'd don't like to do this side just to annoy oh, her. Oh, that's right. Yes. Just to annoy her. Skill. <laughs> uh, Skill step. There we go. Okay. So the door isn't trapped as far as silk. Uh, sorry, as far as cherry is concerned. Um, other than you're convinced as well that given that this door has not been tampered with the ward on it is fine doesn't seem to be any reason not many of these have been trapped the door isn't locked either uh, Cherry is quite willing to open the door cool and sorry this had a perfect seal on it yes it yep. did yep the seal is fine so you can so see ex- cor- yep yeah, so you're not expecting anything nasty along this corridor. So the corridor um, has two doors, one to the right and one to the left. Cherry can again do the same thing and check, first of all, the door on the right. She doesn't think it's trapped. She moves to an end door here. Check that one. And again, she's convinced that they're not trapped. There are no locking mechanisms on these doors either. So she's happy, if you are, to open these doors up. Yep. Door on the right leads via some steps to a fountain room. Again, like the room just to the right hand side, just to the east of it, there's a large fountain empty and dry that fills a rather somber chamber there was probably once a pool of water inside this stone basin but it's long since dried up there are a few coins lying in the basin but the coins are very old and quite tarnished alcoves around the chamber have been richly carved with a range of decorative um, motifs and um, scenes if you look closely i won't ask you to make a perception roll you can see more figures that must be Present the amorish, these tall, winged, and jet type creatures. But the fountain is quite dry. Hmm. Okay. Did we have a water source in here further back, or no? That... Um, is there any water? No, there isn't. Not certainly not on this level. Okay. And um, let me just double check. I think there is one on the upper level. You're. You remember there was that pool. Let me just show you the map again. With the coins? Scrying That's pool. Right. That's right. There was the scrying pool, and there was water in there that had okay. stayed fresh somehow. You'll recall that there were also some 
um, braziers which are still burning so they don't seem to be using up the coal okay i'll go grab just like a canteen of water from that pool and kind of dump it into the um the uh fountain that's okay the one you've just found yeah can you all give me a perception roll? you add water to the fountain to the middle fountain and you can all hear a distant rumble and a grating of something heavy moving but of course where you are you can't see where that's coming from uh cran you think it's coming from somewhere towards the southwest so if it's good so southwest of relative to where i am or relative to where to you where? are okay. relative to where you are there's a grating and grinding si uh, sound of something heavy moving to the southwest the water <laughs> that you pour into the fountain silk uh fills part of the basin and sits there motionless but it doesn't seep or drain away Okay. Hi guys. And then she quickly jumps in with a, a foot and hoping it's a portal. <laughs> <laughs> um, Cherry says, I don't know if now is the time that you need to wash your feet, but okay, mm. nothing happens. Well, guys, I, I, heard some, I heard some noise down in, uh, it could be that door that we couldn't open. Open. There was like a big grinding noise. Comes mm. down there south, south and west. As I added the water or before that even happened? As you added the water, as the water went into the basin, you could hear the door or cram suspects that it's, it's the door moving that you couldn't open. Hang on a tick. Mm. Uh, cram, cram jumps down and gets to the stairs and looks in. Has the door opened? Yes, fractionally. Bingo, boys and girls. Silk, oh, you wow. clever, clever young lady. Sorry, old lady. I just wanted to jump in a portal <laughs> <laughs> okay do you want more to water. add more water so remember there's another fountain right you can try and add water to that if you wish or you can add oh, more I water gotcha. i wonder if that one's for the other room so yes i'm going to try the other fountain what other room did we is the one this side the one we forced our way through um you sort of oh, you gotcha. dug pits and all the all the manner of things yeah so that oh. was or so basically forced your way in there yeah the one. yeah the one. Oh, i'll uh like uh, sorry uglin will add, add a canteen to the right hand fountain and just see if you can hear any noise coming from the southeast okay more grating noise and Cran will probably shout back, it's bloody working, you know, that door. Keep it up. That's good. Wow. It's now almost open wide enough for you to get. Is that so adding water? To... Cherry walk and hunker so over the fountain and add to it. with. So you've, so you've added water to the two fountains that you can see on your map. And the door has almost opened fully. Ah, so either fountain opens those door. Uh, sorry, that door. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Adding more water fountains has no additional effect uh big lad have yeah. you got anything like a, a a ram or big bar just to put underneath that do uh, door just to keep it up a fraction if not we need to find something just in case it has some kind of timer on it oh shitload of old swords one of those work i thought you're making a chair out of that sword which is now rubbish yeah um, i've got yeah what, got... what do you want yeah i've got plenty broadsword I've got a, two, a two ended sword with mercury in it, a long kayak. I've got an entire suit of chainmail we might be able to wedge under there. <laughs> <laughs> and somehow, roll up, like... move something, roll. Um, yeah, there's no, there's no shortage of implements and uh, sharp items that Cran could wedge under the door. But pouring more water into the fountain doesn't do anything. And Cran, you can try forcing the door. But it's very, very resilient and resistant. You'd have to, um, you know, really be on your metal to shove this door open. And is it wide enough to get through? Not yet. No. Not even for a skinny cherry. No, not quite. And if cherry can't get through, then none of you are going to be able to. Get through. No. We even, need even a halfling like... PC in the next level. They still have a beer belly like me. That's true. Yeah. No chance. <laughs> Okay, and on the bottom south 
eastern corner there was the um someone that kept putting their finger to their lips or something then we just by uh yeah there was that strange creature wasn't there um so if you can recall you found a chamber um down here where there was a tall creature who you decided to leave alone he seemed to be operating on corpses zombie bodies um, right. stitching sewing and so on and he seemed not particularly aggressive but rather um perturbed that you'd disturbed his whatever it was he was doing his experiments right. and so kind of zoned out for that part okay i remember yeah he was like a fight that we didn't need to have i think at the time that's right you yeah. decided that there didn't seem to be any reason you got into the treasure room that seems to be between the two chambers there was nothing of any value in his room. So you decided just to leave him alone. Okay. So I guess it's just the western, northwestern corridor there, that last door for Cherry and we'll... Okay. So if we add little bits of water to the left and the right fountain um, in, in turn, does it make any difference at all? No, the door doesn't open, uh, doesn't show any more sign of moving at all. Hmm. Okay, perhaps the missing piece of the puzzle you need is soon revealed a lantern you find at the end of some steeper stairs, the third fountain. Ah. Again, just like the others. Okay. The pool of water has long since dried up. The carvings thought... around the wall chamber room, but all three chambers have fountains in them that have long since dried up. Jerry, go have a pee. <laughs> Yeah, she looks at you and She's just perfect. says nothing. No, Cherry does not. Ah, uh, she would be the first one in there doing that. <laughs> no, she wouldn't. Well, actually, I don't uh, know. Bosco can be a bit strange. Yeah, that's right. I could now give, we need to be recording. I could do some middle-aged 3 a.m. middle-aged pee, if you like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't look. Don't look. <laughs> uh, kind of like oily a substance that look on the top of the water. It's gonna, it's gonna take, it's gonna take a week to fill that up with. <laughs> you nearly, nearly got a drop. <laughs> um, should it be that colour? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there are two fountains. Do you want to put water in the third fountain? Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Okay, mm. as you apply water to the third fountain, you can hear yet more of this grating noise, something heavy grating against stone, and sure enough. That door that had been obviously berooned and uh, lined with Cora opens to reveal another treasure room. Oh, wow. Well. Keep your own silk. I, I'm not interested in... Well, I do like baubles, actually. I like weapons. Is there any more weapons in there? Yes, but anything you shiny. can't carry uh, any. Portal-like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so the the room beyond is obviously filled with chests, uh, with chests and brass urns. I like um, the giggle. No, there, there are no <laughs> obvious portals. I like the One of the chests is open, but the rest are closed. Um, there are six chests in total. There's a large marble statue of robed human woman that rests on an open box, and this Ooh. is one of the few um, human. Um, sorry, statues of humans that you've seen. Much of this temple has obviously been dedicated to the Amarishi. What do you wish to do? I am going to check the floor, the ceiling, yeah. the sides for any kind of holes, pressure plates, trap-like things. Okay, uh, Cherry will probably do the same thing. Uh, so let me pull up her character sheet. You check around the entrance to the chamber. You can't see anything remarkable at all. Uh, Cherry agrees with you. She can't find anything that hints at a tripwire um, or any sort of pressure plate. Okay. So there doesn't seem to be anything preventing your entrance into this treasure chamber at all. So that means that, for example, you could uh, remove the urns if you wished. Um, you could remove the rugs and some of the other curiosities that are there. Um, the chests, Cran, are probably 
certainly judging by the one which is full of golden coins, probably a little bit big to drag out. Mm, okay. Can you describe the statue of the woman a bit more? If I get a bit, uh, sorry, if I'm going to get a bit closer and has a closer look. Yes. Yeah, so the woman uh, is dressed in long robes, but nothing that looks particularly old. They are probably quite stylish. What's been worked into the statue, and it's not a life-size statue, it's a small statue. What's been worked into the statue um, is a quite an intricate engraved tiara circlet going around the woman's forehead she's human um, not young but not old her face is serene she doesn't seem to be holding anything so it's a rather plain statue um, if the truth be told okay the chest that's open um contains Stuart, before sorry before you go do we have any readings or any description of the final one of the heroes that we're trying to rescue uh, uh, facial description i'm just thinking is is this a statue where... no it isn't as no. far as you're aware if you're a so you found three sarcophagi in total and so the last sarcophagi which is just to the north of this treasure room like um that uh-huh and you've got names for these three heroes, three Amarishi heroes. Ah, uh, okay. So this is a statue of one of the heroes. Well, the statue can't be because the statue that you've just seen is a human, the Amarishi. Ah, oh, sorry. Okay. Amarishi queen. So you've got information, heard the name of the woman who helped build this temple and dedicate this temple, um, a law master. Sorry, that name fell out. Go ahead again. Uh, so you've got somewhere, and I can't remember where it is in sort of story entries, but it's on the portal somewhere. Okay. There's a name of a woman who uh, was a lawmaster, I believe, or certainly a magical magician. And it was partly her doing that has created this temple. And as you've explored the temple, rather than it being a place of worship, it's clearly a place of remembrance. So you recall you found sort of three of Amarishi heroes, all of whom were or served um, somebody called, and I'll just show you our uh, served somebody called Argumenthal Raz. Oh, right. So Argumenthal Raz was clearly a general, a king, or a leader of Amarishi. The three sarcophagi and the three embalmed bodies that you found are all Amarishi. Two of them had swords. The most recent had a great war hammer. And these three were great champions of the Amarishi and were Argumenthal Raz's consorts, um, aides, um, ruling council or something. Right, and then though he who waters will himself be watered, so that's probably what opened this place. Okay, but the statue that you've just found in this treasure room is a human, um, and it could be your suspicion might be that this statue of the human is either being that it's female, could be somebody who is important to the Amarishi. Could be a statue of the um, lawmaster herself. Could be a statue of a goddess or something else that maybe she was. You don't know. You'll remember that the Amarishi are basically a forgotten race of people, mm-hmm. never numerous, and you know you don't know much about them. Right. Um, as it happens. Um, the, you have got clues which suggest they hail or they came from Cran's home. Mm. Mm. But Cran has never heard of these people. Um, Silk, you've only got a vague recollection. So the statue itself that you found is not the most valuable thing you've ever. Heard. The chest which is open contains thousands of gold coins. So that would restock your wealth if you needed to take it. 
but the coins themselves if you look closer Ugnan, are old they're old-fashioned they're quite thick quite heavy and they're um, embellished with emblem symbol don't recognize so although these coins are gold their ancient nature means that they probably aren't legal you'd have to melt them down to get any value out of them and that would obviously detract value can i try an obscure law just in case he just saw that on some page somewhere when he's going through the stuff in um uh, yes yes yeah okay that role is sufficient to tell you that they're Nureti. so the people that used to live on this these names before were the Nureti. if you have Did a have back, book? you do have a book about the Nureti. you covered it strange tower remember you've right. not had much chance to read it yet yeah um, exactly between you you'd know the Nureti were a dark and malevolent group of became rather dark and malevolent um threatened the security of nearby Selkai and other civilized areas um, they worshipped if you recall dark and rather malevolent gods and um, were very warlike and aggressive and so their civilization was crushed pretty quickly by a combination of nearby humans and also elven warriors led by Lormar in a concerted effort. It's probably all you know until you've had a chance to read some more of the books that you've got. Okay. So six chests, one open with lots and lots of gold coins. I'm assuming you want Cherry to start checking out chest by chest or do you want to do something else? No, could Cherry just check for safety uh, personally? I mean, Cran's all for stocking us up to try and have the best chance of beating all the horrific devils and demons on the island but if we, if we have time maybe come back for this stuff but take some of it but i don't i don't think we're here to take all of it up. no I mean, let's see what we can use me i presume the kagora lining means we can't cast any detect spells in here it'd have to be pulled out and laid out in, the, room, right. in the other room so how about, right. how, why don't we spend some time taking everything out I can spend a bit of time out of character, out of game, six power points, casting detect essence, detect channeling, detect mentalism on all this stuff. We might be able to find something. Okay. All right. So Cherry will yep. have a look at uh, chest one. It's not trapped as far as she can tell. So she will try and um, pick the lock. Uh, let me have a look. Uh, then come, uh, come out here. Right. So she's picked the lock on the first chest. There's a set of armor, or there's a, a number of armor inside the chest. Uh, so there's one set of what looks like chain type armor and two sets of what look like leather type armor. Nice. Um, you can drag those out if you wish. Um, she will check the second chest, which again she's convinced is not trapped. She will have a go at opening that chest and that's also successful i didn't realize she was so good at picking locks um inside there's what looks like an oversized uh war mattock so oh. the war mattock itself is you'd need to be very strong or you'd need to have um two hands there's also uh, a rather nice longbow that looks like it's made of some sort of dark bone material, darkish ivory, Ooh. almost as if the ivory has um, is black rather than you know bone coloured, white coloured ivory. So there's a, a mattock and a bow. Chest number four, I think we're on. Not trapped as far as you can see. She's going to lock. That's a very hard one. That's successful as well inside um there's a set of books all of the books though as you look at them very quickly seem to be written in nuretic so there's a set of eight of them i'll add all of this stuff to um obsidian too there's yet more stuff you have to look do you at. have a list that we can basically go through sure. the lot when we when we give it a good yeah. scrutiny uh, I'll tell you what, what, yeah what i can do is uh in a few minutes Drag all this, put it in the chat log so you can look at everything. Cool. And because you're going to know whether they're magic or not. So that's that one. 
Okay, so we're now on to the last chest, which is chest six. She'll do a perception. It's not trapped, and it's sheer folly to pick, and that's a fail. So there's a last chest, which she's not managed to pick the lock off. She can have another go. All right, I'll do this manually. So she tries, she'll try one more time. Lock, and that's going to be a fail as... Ooh. Stand aside, Jerry. I can do this. Okay, you want to make a sheer folly lock. Oh my god! No, that fails. Oh my god! I thought it's the <laughs> two things got twice. For a I you... <laughs> fails. So Damn you're going to have to wait for some time to pick it. Let me drag the things over that you found. Um, so these will obviously be chest by chest, and obviously I'll put them on obsidian tomorrow. So yet more. Um, items. So the armor, if you look at those, the demon hide wow. armor, and two sets of vampiric armor. Those are things that you might choose to wear or might not. Chest two, when you get to it, basically it's 4,000 gold coins, but if you've melted them down so that you can then use them, they'll only be worth about 300 gold coins. Chest three is a war mattock, a nice weapon, but probably none of you are going to be interested in using it. There's a long bow, plus 15, that, in, that will inflict a random curse oh, um, when it hits with a critical. Nice. I'm not sure whether any of, any of you would choose to use that, and you can probably see why that and also the man-slaying yeah. uh, warmatic were actually locked away. Chest four, um, Ingebron's Tombs of the Panopticon. I can tell you've been playing through, Luke. Yeah. Uh, so eight tomes written in Ureti, combination of generations of study in the summoning and binding of demons. That's Silk. Uh, there you go, Silk. There's eight books that I'm sure you will uh, wrestle with Odin for. So really, wow. all of the books will take considerable time, but it will grant you access to any es of any essence user to the dark contacts and dark summons, which will allow Very you to cool. summon uh, um, demons, etc. Wow. Um, so again, you can probably see why these things were locked away so securely. You suspect that these things weren't used by the Amarishi. They've been locked away by the Amarishi. And now, quite conveniently, you've unlocked them. Um, so if you read further down, Chester Holy five, shit, sorry. <laughs> the Hourglass of the Slayer. That's not very nice. No, not at all. Yeah, these, we... these are almost like things what were locked away for, for people not to use. Yeah, That's right. it's like it. So now, well, you can try and put them back and lock them in the chest. Treasury vault is open. Wow. I feel Holy like crap. that's what they we should do. They could kill a whole town with that, yeah. Yeah, we should probably put it all back and then uh, try and work out how the hell to close this. Yeah. Okay, there are also, however, dragon urn also contain coins. Lots and lots of silver and copper. Or copper, sorry, coffee. Copper or Nuretti. The carpets, though, are also magical. Now, those are things that you might choose to take with you. There's a carpet of meditation and a carpet of flying. Oh, oh my God. I do some meditations. That's quite good. I think you do as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's all good. You, you're, you're due for some. So with all of that information, you're probably now you might want to think again about the statue. The statue itself is magical, that woman's statue. It acts as a times three power, but it's not exactly portable. <laughs> no. It is on a boat. <laughs> well, if it's on your boat and it's following you around, duct tape to your flying carpet, and you're sitting <laughs> on your flying carpet, with your arse in contact with the statue. <laughs> Perfect. Um, we could make it into the figurehead of our boat. I think that would be ideal. <laughs> yeah. But, of course, your concern might be many of these items have locked away. So who is the statue of? And that's where some time reading some of the books have got my own. Yeah. But anyway, I'll post all of this stuff up on um, even if you decide to lock it away. I mean, you don't have to. You can always take it with you. Um, and bury it in a vault somewhere, and you've got a number of locations you probably um, hope will be secure, or you could just drop them into the boiling sea. Do, yeah, I'm ever saying, do, do we trust what we think is a, 
an extremely powerful benefactor enough with the information about these evil weapons because he would probably know how to destroy these yes possibly but but also he would definitely know a black market for them as well which is a hell of a lot more worrying as well and i think obviously the item that um i mean you know you might want to keep the books i, I would suspect that the biggest the most seductive items there are the books and the hourglass yeah the hourglass is just evil it's horrible okay now you would probably know the name there of brahma there brahma there was the last uh, high queen um high priestess of the nureti so she's a figure of um some you know reviled i suppose is the best word to use so she was a queen of the nureti and oh under her rulership tarak neb this great city which dominates the island rose to prominence essentially the nureti were a peaceful pastoral folk but when vrama there mysteriously appears on the scene they suddenly split into a very warlike aggressive people and a more traditional pastoral people the former destroyed the latter and then started dreaming dreams of world world dominion and so on and so forth the books in the reti, are there any pictures in them if you just like look, quickly flick it through? It's, it's all are, pictures. It's a big comic book. That's right. <laughs> there, are, there are enough images, pictures and diagrams so that you get a feel for the fact that these books will allow some devote time to be able to summon, bind and use demons and things of the other world. So you can get an essence, a feeling, if you'll pardon the phrase, you can get a feeling for what these books will allow you to do. The hourglass, you just know, is really quite unpleasant and evil. Very, very dangerous indeed. Put that, put that in sell, Kai. <laughs> we could buy a whole fleet of boats selling that. And I'm wondering if Silk now is going to make a yeah. role to see if she doesn't absolute, uh, accidentally activate it. Curiosity. Hey, uh, I've done or so. If you take a look at that, is there any way you could like get it to operate in reverse? So start killing the really powerful fuckers first, <laughs> and then gradually get down until we like tune it out until, and then stop it suddenly. So you can just point. you can see Silk wet, wetting her lips, looking at the hourglass and going, hmm, and just reaching out a hand to turn it over. <laughs> so don't touch. So some of those items, obviously, you're going to need to make um, some sort of the tune or starves wands roll to actually trigger the effect. Um, really? you know, the hourglass, for example, and, and things like that. Um, obviously, the carpet of flying, that's just uh, figuring out what the command word is, and then you can use it. Uh, most of the other items are similar. So you have a bit of a dilemma. Do you want to unseal these items back in the chamber, or do you want to take them with you under the understanding that you know in time there's going to be a shipload of mercenaries arriving on the island. And that's the issue, because I think we know they're going to the city to retrieve uh, right. that. We don't know if they know about the temple, uh, but the issue being is mm -hmm. if they do know about the temple, we've just effectively gone round and destroyed every single guardian that's here. Um, and in fact, even burnt them afterwards, so they don't even regenerate, so they're not even ready for them at the end. Right. So we've got a bit of a dilemma to think, okay, if you go to the temple, they're going to take the stuff. Um, but if you don't go to the temple, it's going to stay here. But if there's anybody in the future who comes here, they're going to get it. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's only going to be either trial and error, uh, brute force and ignorance, they force open the door of the vault. That's assuming that you can close the vault door somehow. Yeah, exactly. Like I can I can uh get rid of the water in each of the fountains and see if it restores the thing. But you're right. I think without the guardians we should take everything and then just uh put it into the volcano if there's a volcano around that we suck. Well there is a dormant volcano on the island, but that doesn't mean that there's no magma. It's not Yeah, true enough. And unfortunately, he doesn't know enough about uh, magician stuff, so there's no cracks that you could call. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we could even, uh, there's so many portals, so kind of <laughs> mentioned. We could chuck everything in a portal if we don't want to go. Would you want Mab getting her hand on those things? No. No, 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 no. Yeah, she would use it. 
Queen Mab. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, keeping it ourselves, I think the temptations are too much for Silk, at least. She'd be sneaking into Ugnan's bag, trying to look at the... Out. And he was, he was Fosh. Sorry? He was who Fosh. Is? Lady Fosh. I forgot who she was. Right, Lady Vosh is the human lawmaster who you think is associated with the Amor. Maybe she was their representative. Maybe she summoned them. Maybe she worked with them. And we, but you've got no other um, third-party images of her to confirm if she's you've the got statue. No, none. And none. Th those books are all about demon summoning, so she's not going to be in there either. Or demon work with demons, anyway. Right. Well, she's certainly not a demon. Um, you can make a memory roll, please. All of you have thrown coins into the scrying pool or the pool of remembrance first level. Give me a memory roll. <laughs> Silk, it's all a bit of a blur. Silk is looking um, at her nails. Okay. I love this color on me. So you remember if you looked at the... Or you can remember that you tossed coins in of remembrance and there were lots of Amarishi and you saw various disjointed disparate images of Amarishi out in the fields, Amarishi fishing, Amarishi farming, Amarishi celebrating, Amarishi children playing, so on and so forth. Uh, Cran, can you give me a memory roll please? Ugnan has remembered the name the human or silk did of the human lawmaster, the female lawmaster, but they aren't aware that the images or descriptions of this woman and they're trying to match it with the statue that they've just found. However, you've all tossed coins into the pool of remembrance, which gave you these strange flashback images, if you like, dreamlike images of the Amarishi. The effect of being underground for so long as silk, she couldn't really remember anything. No, I, I have a feeling I have been the same boat. My memory is not one of his strong suits, nor his player, actually. So I think. Uh, ooh, 69. Ooh, that was, oh, I thought that was nice. Yeah, same here. Uh, okay. Me so. Too. He's just thinking you, of sexy times. Yeah, you can, <laughs> you can vaguely recall that there were a few images, uh, but very fleeting, of a human in some of these. But the human image was always a reflection. So there was a scene where you were looking at Amrishi children playing by a beautiful green uh, pool of water, a lake, and reflected in the lake was a human. There was an image of some Amrishi women combing each other's hairs in front of a quite elegant, long, full length silver mirror. And again, reflected in that, you could be human. Hmm. I can't quite remember. It might be, might not be. But that's uh, something to find out for later. Right, so uh, we were saying one of the issues is if we leave the stuff here and those cultists oh. come here, well, we've killed all the defences here, so they're just going to waltz in, work out how to do the uh, open the door and walk away with some quite devastating stuff. So they did say they're only going to the city, though, so... If they don't come here, fine. But that doesn't mean that in five years' time another uh, venturing party come along and steal all this gear. How about put them onto the airship, flying over the dormant volcano, and as Silk says, just chuck them into the any magma we see. Yeah, that's that's as destructive as I can think of. Even if it's not, it will sink down, and uh, <laughs> it might be it's stuck hard there. to retrieve. Yeah. If yeah. there's an explosion, hopefully it ends up in the boiling sea anyway. Right. Okay. Like it. Okay. Although that does, there is a non-significant, well, non-insignificant risk of, you need to keep it very quiet. Because there's quite a lot of gear there um, that we'd be throwing away because there's, there'd be a lot of temptation to steal it. Yeah, keep it we all, can't, keep all wrapped we can't up. Let it, yeah, cannot let it get into others' others' hands. It may be worthwhile trying if Cherry, whatever the trickiest lot that she picked, putting it all or all of the, most of the stuff in that chest, locking it, chaining it, doing whatever we can. If you, she could certainly try. I mean, relocking a lock is just a matter of just making another big lock. I think. Right. So if you want her to lock some of the items away in one of the chests and take the chests with you, she can do that for you. We can say it's maybe diseased items, and I can put on a big show about 
pretending to cast spells and stuff to try and keep the disease away from the crew. Okay. And that's why we're destroying it, and that will hopefully put them off trying to take the stuff. Okay. Um, what items would you like to lock up? Well, is there anything here that we want? And the armour isn't particularly... Well, it's not. some of it isn't very pleasant. Only with soft leather would be good for the vampiric armour. Only with rigid leather would be good for the other one. Yeah, I mean, uh, that, that's yeah. amazing stuff, but it's pretty evil as well, though. I mean, if it does drain blood out all of people, of really evil, would, yeah. yeah, it's all pretty nasty. But you never know. We don't know everybody's alignment like you would in... No, I mean, you know, role master Yeah, well, she does agree. Moral, ethical code. So knowing Silk's weakness, I wouldn't be surprised if Silk says, well, I would quite like to keep the books. There's no, the nod may have been held, the books are going to end up in the volcano. <laughs> Whatever happens, there still, still could be what? an after them if they do. <laughs> I'm going to roll that self-discipline And having now. said that, there's, I mean, Oven <laughs> is, though he's probably not one who... No, no, I, actually, I don't... Still knowledge and information, and why ever destroy anything? Yeah, I mean, Ogden's not that interested in, like, the last couple of books we had that, you know, I'd, he'd go through, maybe look, read through it to see about it, and I'd be getting some, like, lore about it, but would not be interested in any of the magic, but there's no harm in one of us, uh, i.e. Silk, hint, hint, being able to know quite a lot about demons, just in case we've got to come up against something really quite evil that she could use some kind of arcane knowledge against. Mm -hmm. I mean, Silk, too read all eight of those tomes and be able to use those spells would be you wouldn't be able to do any of that this next couple of sessions by any means it would take months of you studying the books so that would be post whatever you do on this island but yeah. if you kept the books with you and on the way back read them and then whatever we post um Tarek nev and post this city Yes, you know, by level 10, I'd certainly say, well, you probably invested time to read those books. But I'll have to have a look at the rules. And that's what Yeah, that's more than cool. Okay. So what items would you like to lock away in chests? Would you like to lock everything away? I relock everything. Or... Well, I haven't got my glasses on, so I didn't quite. I'm I'm trying to like read this from half a mile. Yeah, okay. I can just be able to see. Well, it. Why, why but I can well, see. We can I, I can see that then. one of these ones suddenly uh, the vamp the vampiric armor sounded good until I read about it's evil and needs a 15 level resistance roll. So let's not yeah. go anywhere near that. <laughs> um, yeah, that's not good. The cash might be useful in that case, uh, but not particularly. No, because as, as uh, Stuart says, if we it's unusable unless we melt it down. That's only three hundred gold. Well, you know we've got enough for that. We probably don't need to yeah, do that kind the of war, thing. War matter, to be honest, I don't. Really, it's another weapon. I could use it to like wedge doors open with, I suppose. Um, but don't really need that. The the longbow looks amazing, apart from the curse. So if we could get that effect removed, that might be good. But again, have no idea. Um, the tomes knowledge i i kind of he's he's been around silk and i've been too long you shouldn't destroy knowledge really so i'm not sure that's a good idea getting rid of those well the yeah, idea of a le level and pack those away already well a, a level two <laughs> demon being able to be controlled but we don't know what's in the city if there's like level one and two demons and we've got some way of just controlling them out of the way then that could actually... be incredibly useful or yeah. even well, yeah, commanding them directing them and like compelling them to attack our enemies that'd be great well that's what uh gm was saying is that's not going to happen for months ah. right okay yeah, gotcha you okay you have time for that what you could do is given time i would say that if you skim through the books you'd have an understanding that um i don't know x demon that you can see is probably a low level because the summoning ritual that you can see or the summoning circle that you can see isn't particularly elaborate. You could certainly get that probably from a skimming of the books. But in terms of actually being able to summon, bind, control, you wouldn't be able to do that unless you spent some considerable time studying and learning those spells. Um, right, right. So in that case, definitely the carpets. We absolutely destroy the hourglass, no matter what anyone says. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it'll reform. Yeah. yeah, I'm loving the carpets. It sounds to me like a like a carpet drop ship up to the airship. Does it have a red eye wreathed in flame in the middle of the, <laughs> uh, of the hourglass as you look no. into? It? No. no. But that's just it. That hourglass reforms, so there's no point in breaking. 
Wow. Yeah, so it's carpets, yes. Somewhere. For me uh, personally, for Ugland personally, sorry, um, he's not interested in any of the other stuff. So is it even too risky in case it bubbles to the surface in the volcanoes, even throw it into the volcano? Do we need a permanent solution somewhere else? Well, it says break, it, break in the glass if halts the effect, so we could just smash it. I'm sorry, just saw the last bit as well. Eyes again. Yeah. Yeah. Reforms to 24 hours, that's pretty, pretty nasty in all counts. Yeah. I don't know how to destroy. Well, I'll look at the silk. Doing ones, what do you reckon, silk? No fucking idea. I could yeah, keep smashing I... it once a day, but. Well, let's do that then. At least we know we're in charge of that thing's fate instead of someone else, because I, I agree with Agnin. It's just open pickings for someone that stumbles upon this. Yeah. So better to keep it with us and then do what we ought to do with it after, I guess, instead of leave. Okay. So you decide that as evil as some of these items in particular are, they have to come with you because there's a risk that they'll fall into other people's hands, okay? Yeah. So you can, um, all of the items shuffle gear, though you're quite laden by now, particularly Cran with the numerous weapons and these, I know that the adage that Cran obviously mutters a lot, you can too many knives um, is what you've all heard. Even Cran's yeah. now beginning to yeah, but my dad never had. <laughs> Fucking hell, just the stuff I'm carrying without the new stuff we've found is 249 pounds now. So, that's, uh... <laughs> so you can basically fill a couple of the chests again, close the lids, and between you, you are basically carrying a lot of this stuff in chests between you uh, if you decide to exit or when you decide to exit the temple. So I'll get, I'll get all this stuff up on Obsidian over the weekend. Is there anything you want you want to do? Do you want to rest overnight? Do you want to revisit any rooms, or do you now want? I'd like to get back to the airship if possible, and then we could rest on the airship and then decide yeah, from there. Pretty... And bear, yeah. bear in mind, guys, there's a very very uh, desperate bunch of men, pretty damn close to us, who would probably have no compulsion with stealing this stuff. So... Yeah, right. Yeah, so remember where you are is slightly north of the stockade and your airship, I think, you had, had you decided to move that off the island just in case it was hijacked yeah. by these desperate people? I think we also just uh, floated above it, didn't we? Yeah. That's right. So there's a rocky outcrop, a uh, rocky island to the southwest of Aranmore, which I think you'd stationed your boat on, your flying airship, and I think you'd agreed for that to come and pick you up or check in with you in 48 hours. That's right. Were we going to use signal mirror or something? Does somebody have a signal mirror or something like that? that... Um, so you're it now. You've got to get back out of the jungle and out of the complex to a location where you can signal your airship. And that means, unfortunately, Going back probably to the stockade. Probably. What about the top top of the temple? Was that still relatively sheltered? It's still, yeah, it's still sheltered. I'm afraid by the. Because, like, like you said, Cran, yeah. I think these lot will quite desperate, and I don't want to kill them, but I don't want to be killed by them. Mm -hmm. That's profound words, Agnes. I know. I've been sitting my ass for a while. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great quote. So. The, the issue, the thing that you're obviously going to have to head back to the stockade with a lot of magic stuff. Yeah, let's drop, unless they've got people who, because we weren't actually that far away, we're only like a mile or so away, aren't we? So That's right, you were only about three or four hours um, hike through the jungle. We could put it, like, literally, is it safer burying it somewhere where we can find easily again and drop in and out, literally from a rope from the airship later? to pick it up and avoid the risk of leaving it there. But I don't think an animal might dig it up or something. Or if they're watching us and very devious, then they may find it. I don't know, is that less risky? Magic. Uh, yeah. Sorry, Silk. Do you have any like enchant enchantments that can make things invisible? I do, but it's only for 24 hours. I mean, I could keep doing that every day. I can set aside some... Oh, like if, if we knew where to put it, for example, like, for example, on top of this uh, temple, and then put it all together, make it visible, and then make contact with the airship, 
bring it over here and then just throw it up on the um carpet. Maybe do it that way. Wow, that's a nice idea. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. That sounds good. Okay, you could try that. Remember, there are the creatures called garks, which roam around the jungle. Oh yeah, giving that gark that thing would be fairly dangerous. Giving them the hourglass, that wouldn't be nice. So even if yeah, they invisible, if they bump into it and find the stake, um, I think they dispel the spell, wouldn't they? Yeah, I think so. Could we leave it in here? Is uh, just temporarily. Well, remember you've got that um, difficult door mechanism to get through, so you could leave it inside. And even though the guard dead and the chests have all been opened and so on, as far as you can tell, whatever comes in is still going to have to get in past that puzzle. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's yeah. Brilliant. And the garks, the garks won't be able to manage that. So at least they are like no wild. Well, the garks haven't find managed it. it. No, so. That's great. That's, that a, that's a good idea. You, that would give you some time. You wouldn't want to rely on that puzzle because it was of... Um, no, no, literally just a day or two. That's what we really need, isn't it? So you could leave it in the chest, put it in a chamber of your choosing, and then come back once you've got your airship sorted. Well, could we leave it in here and see what happens when we drain the water out of... I can't remember which one it was now. Add one of those. Yeah. But I'm thinking if, we, the door again. if we're clever enough to work it out, then somebody else will be. No, I just mean until until we come back and are ready to take it. But someone else may not be quite as clever in given a week. So, all right, yeah, no, no, fair enough, yeah. Okay, so you can pile the stuff back into the chamber. Silk, how are you getting rid of the water? So at the moment, the door is open, and all three pools have water in them. Not very much. Are you going to? Have you got a? suitable spell to remove the water yeah i've got a boil liquid so i can just boil it okay. boil it boil it it's a first so level boiling spell, the liquid so away just... do you want to make some powerful just so you don't kill yourself or make some uh, spell rolls just to not kill yourself yeah, yeah exactly here we go <laughs> okay still alive still alive and still alive Ooh, maybe lots of them all right so um silk uh, with practiced ease, boils the water away, and with the water removed, as you hoped, the door swings shut, leaving Cherry inside. Let me just move Cherry. <laughs> <laughs> so the no, door no. swings shut. Actually, I should probably tell Bosco that they closed the door yeah. and forgot because you're an NPC <laughs> that you were still inside. Uh, Stuart's really apologetic, but he's, as he said, it's in the module and he can't change the way out. Yeah. Fantasy Grounds crashed and uh, he deleted the backup. So, yes, like, that's, that's right. Really so, that, that's it. <laughs> um, okay, so you've managed to seal the door up behind you just by removing the liquid. You know the secret to opening this highly enchanted door. Now, all you need to do is with the demon slaying sword you've got, return to your airship via the tower. Is that your plan? Piece, piece of cake. Yes. And that's where we'll leave this episode. So we are now leaving the temple. Next episode is to see us head off to the stockade to speak to those pirates there and hopefully not end in a horrible bloodbath. Hopefully have more players back as well next session. As usual, thank you very much for subscribing, for watching, for listening. As you know, look in the description. You can find out all the different ways you can get in contact or watch on YouTube or Podbean or iTunes or Twitch, etc. You know, all the usual bollocks. Thanks very much. Take care. Catch you next time. Cheers.